everyone, I'm Sarah Bell Reed and welcome back to another video. So I'm doing something a little bit different today. You'll notice that I'm not in my studio and that's because I'm spending the day outside uh, kind of running around and enjoying a little bit of nature and playing with the new Hydrosynth Explorer. This is not a sponsored video or a paid partnership. I've had this instrument for a while because I was helping out with some testing early on and I actually am really enjoying it. So I just wanted to make a video today to share some patches and sounds with all of you. So the sound engine in the Explorer is exactly the same as the one that's in the desktop and the keyboard hydrosynths. And those instruments have been out for a little while and there's a lot of information about how they work and what they can do. So in this video, I'm not going to give you a point by point explanation of how this synth works, but there are a number of uh, differences between all of them and different things to consider, and I'll share those in a little bit. So one difference right off the bat that's personally very exciting to me is that the Hydrosynth Explorer runs on batteries. I've never had a synth that I could just take with me to the park or outdoors and play around with, so I thought this was a perfect excuse to spend the day outside exploring and make some patches that were inspired by the world around me. All right, so let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Nailed it.
Okay, so if you're thinking about picking up a hydrosynth, there are definitely a lot of similarities between all of the options, but obviously there are also some differences that are worth considering. Of course, the Hydrosynth Deluxe was also just recently announced. It's a super cool 73 key Hydrosynth with bi tambral capabilities, and it seems awesome for studio use. I hope one day I get to try it, but personally right now, I'm more interested in something that's a little more easy to move around with and is generally a little more portable. The original Hydrosynth keyboard and the desktop unit are both relatively portable and gigable, and I have been able to try out all three of these instruments, so I'm just going to share a few of my takeaways about each of these units. Okay, so to start, comparing the two keyboard versions, some of the differences are pretty obvious. The Explorer has 37 mini keys, and the regular keyboard Hydrosynth has 49 full-size keys. But they both have polyphonic aftertouch, which is awesome. This is probably the first synthesizer that has both mini keys and polyphonic aftertouch. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but this is the only one that I know about. And I was really, really pleasantly surprised to discover that it actually works really well. So that whole dimension of playing a hydrosynth is still very much intact on this little keyboard. The other playing interface differences between the two are that the Explorer doesn't have the giant ribbon control that we have on the keyboard. And instead of pitch and mod wheels like we have on the keyboard synth, on the Explorer we have these pitch and mod touch strips. So between the desktop unit and the Explorer, there are also some obvious differences in playing interface. Depending on what kind of player you are, it might make more sense for you to use the grid layout that we have on the desktop versus the keyboard layout on the Explorer. I personally prefer the experience of playing the keys, but that's just my personal preference. Another important consideration that I mentioned just a moment ago is that on the Explorer we do have these pitch and mod touch strips, but these are absent on the desktop version. One more thing that's perhaps a bit of a subtle detail but still feels important to me is that in order to change octaves on the desktop you have to use the upper left two pads while holding the shift button down. So if you're the kind of player that likes to shiv octaves while you're playing, this can be a little bit awkward on the desktop. Whereas on the Explorer, we have dedicated buttons for shifting the keyboard octave up and down, so you don't have to worry about any shift functions. Now obviously, to overcome little details like that, you could always use the desktop unit with a small MIDI controller. But at the moment, there isn't a small MIDI controller that can connect directly into the Hydrosynth that also has polyphonic aftertouch. You could use something like a Sensil Morph and a MIDI USB host, which I do all the time, but having all of this contained in one package is pretty convenient and nice. So for me, there are a lot of advantages to the Hydrosynth Explorer.
Alright, so the desktop Hydrosynth and the larger keyboard version do have some advantages over the Explorer as well, in my opinion. Objectively, one of the big differences is that the Explorer does not have control voltage inputs. It does have all of the same control voltage outputs as all of the other versions. So if you've played one of the other Hydrosynths, you may also know that the CV inputs are also external audio inputs. So the Explorer does not have the ability to receive external CV or audio. Another thing to note is that the Explorer does not have an expression pedal input, whereas the other versions do. The larger keyboard Hydrosynth has dedicated knobs on the panel for various arpeggiator controls, whereas the Explorer and the desktop both have fewer knobs for these controls. You can still access all the same parameters in the synth, but you need to do a little bit of menu diving in order to get there. In terms of how these instruments are built, the keyboard and desktop Hydrosynths both have a metal chassis with aluminum end cheeks, whereas the Explorer has a molded plastic chassis with a metal bottom plate. That being said, it still feels super sturdy and substantial for the size of the instrument. In terms of editing and patching, the workflow is the same between all of these instruments. You have this grid of modules that you can use to navigate the instrument. But one super small note is that the buttons themselves are slightly different on the Explorer. This is a super nitpicky detail, but here on the Explorer, these ones are a kind of rubber button. Whereas on the desktop and larger keyboard version, the buttons all have plastic caps. Perhaps one of the biggest practical differences for me has to do with the reduced screen size on the Explorer. Because the screen is smaller and you can display fewer parameters per page, editing certain parts of the synth engine requires a lot more paging up and down to get to all of the parameters, like designing shapes for the step LFO or editing assignments in the mod matrix. This is by no means prohibitively difficult in terms of a workflow, and in the end, it's still pretty quick and easy to access everything and to patch everything up. Another consequence of the reduced screen size is that we only have four of these general purpose encoders that we can use as performance macros, rather than eight on the desktop and keyboard versions. You still have access to eight assignable macros per patch on the Explorer, but you can only access four at a time, so you have to switch between two different pages in order to access them all. So functionally, this is the same as the other synths, but if you're the kind of person who likes to set up a large number of performance macros and then tweak them in real time, this is just something to keep in mind.
Okay, so to sum everything up and share my personal takeaways from all of this, I feel like the Hydrosynth Explorer is a pretty awesome and powerful little synthesizer. I love the fact that it runs on batteries, and while I realistically will most often probably be powering it from an external power supply, the fact that I have the option to just kind of throw it into my car or into my backpack and go to a park and make a bunch of sounds and patches super easily is really awesome and appealing to me. So this is obviously not the first time that a synthesizer company has taken their large format synth and has made a smaller and more affordable version of it. But often I find that with when that happens, we either lose some kind of really important feature or there is a significant reduction in the ease of use and the way that you program and patch on the synth. Something that I find super impressive about the Explorer is that even though it is shrunken into a smaller form, it still sounds exactly like a hydrosynth. It still works exactly the way that you would expect one to work. And it has basically all of the same controls that the larger versions have. And at the end of the day, once you kind of get a feel for it, it's just as easy and quick to program as the full size versions. And also, I just want to say again that it's super cool that ASM developed a poly aftertouch mini key bed that actually works and feels really good to play. That's something that I definitely thought was going to be lost in this translation to the smaller form factor, but it's still there. And because that's such a big part of what it means to play one of these instruments, I think it's awesome that you still very much get that interaction. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for joining me on this outside adventure. If you're thinking about picking up a Hydrosynth for yourself, I have included some affiliate links in the description of this video. Anything that you buy from one of those links helps out my channel and makes it possible for me to continue making videos and weird music. And speaking of weird music, if you are interested in checking out the audio from this video in a longer format, as well as audio from all of my other projects and videos, then you can head over to my Patreon page and join our wonderful community over there. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you next time. Bye.